going to have a look at the table of contents which is previewed in this panel on the right hand side here. If we just have a look through what's presenting right now. You can see that we have a title and then indented author's name. There's a preface. There's a foreword with an indented name. Now you might recall in a previous tutorial that we deleted foreword and it's actually not present at all in this book browser listing our table of pages. What I'll do now is I'll click the validate button because this is a good opportunity to have a look at some inconsistencies that are currently in this file. I'm clicking the validate button now which is this big green one. That's going to run a process and report to us down at the bottom here. You can make this screen a little bigger to see lots of interesting things showing up. The one that I wanted to show you is that it says that the appendix file is reachable but not present. And that means that the reference of some kind points to this resource exists in the EPUB file. You see also here forward. This document is reachable but not present in the OPF. Reachable means that a reference of some kind points to this resource exists in the EPUB. Okay, that's the ones that I wanted to look at right now. What that means is that because we've deleted several of the default content pages that were in the in the EPUB and we haven't updated the table of contents that the validator is picking up that some of the references in the table of contents like the foreword and the introduction just there are pointing at pages that no longer exist. So what we're going to do now is to update the table of contents. I just wanted to show you a little bit about validation and how it works. So I'm going to click on this tab which says generate a table of contents. So I'll click that now. And this brings up a generate a table of contents dialog box. And you can see here in this listing here called level that every heading one style and heading two style that we've put into this book in any chapter or page and in fact some heading three styles is listed. Now I'm going to cancel that. Let's go and have a look at our code. Let's choose preface and open that up. Look at our code and you can see that we've got heading one preface and heading two preface. Let's go back to the table of contents generator and I'm going to remove heading two from preface and I'll explain why in a moment. So you see that by unchecking that dialog box it's removed it from the table of contents. I'm going to click the OK button here now and that will update the table of contents preview that we see here and we'll come back here and do some more work. Okay, so first of all you can see that the table of contents preview has updated and also that preface which is the heading one style is there but there's no heading two style whereas in dedication dedication is the heading one style and for my family is the heading two style in that chapter. So let's look at preface. We're still in code view over here and what's changed? You can see that the heading one style remains the same but the heading two style has changed. What's changed is that there is a class that's been introduced right there and it says class equals sigil not in TOC. So when you edit the table of contents generator and remove a heading style sigil puts a class in here to tell the table of contents preview and the table of contents file, the toc.ncx file, not to include this particular heading style in this particular chapter. Let's go back to the table of contents generator. So we've got heading ones and heading twos still to work with. Now I remove 
everything except heading one. And the reason is that I have noticed when I upload my finished and final ebook file to one of my online distributors, it creates an error in their validation process and they reject and, and they fail the file. So it's simply easier for me to just go through this checkbox list here and completely remove everything except the heading ones. So I'll do that now. See all of these Heading 2 styles are disappearing and we're being left with Heading 1 styles. These Heading 3's can also go. And so now we've got a listing of Heading 1 styles that are all validated. Now if you wanted to go back and review that and maybe make some changes, you can uncheck this box here and it will show you all of the items. And then you can recheck some boxes if you want them to show up. So that's okay that now. And you'll see on the right hand side in our table of contents preview that it's completely updated to just display heading one styles. I'm going to save and validate. And here we have down at the bottom a wonderful message that says no problems found. So all of those issues that were being flagged by Sigil's validator have now gone with the removal of all of the Heading 2 and Heading 3 styles. Now the way that Sigil creates Table of Contents, I'll put this back to Book View, is that every time you set a Heading 1, Heading 2, Heading 3 to Heading 6 style in your document, Sigil automatically adds it to the Table of Contents here. This is only the Heading styles. And then your job is to come up here to the Table of Contents Generator and select the ones that you want in your ebook. There's several other things you can do in this generator. The first is to select one of the Table Content Entries and rename it. So this will rename it independently of the title of your chapter. We won't do that. And the other thing you can do is to select Table of Contents entries and move them around. So, it's, so the message here is increase the heading level of the selected entry by one. Let's do that and see what happens. So you can see that Preface has now become part of a heading two of the first five years chapter, which is not what we want, but that's basically what it'll do. I'll shift that back. So now it becomes its own chapter heading. So you can manipulate this to a certain degree, but generally I found what's presented here as Heading 1 Styles is correct and works and will upload successfully to your online distributor. So we'll just OK that now. Now I mentioned in an earlier tutorial that your table of contents information is held in this toc.ncx file. Let's just open that up. And you should never really have to visit this file. This is just for information. You'll see here some familiar things like the word title. And there we have title in our chapters. The first five years, Port Hedland 1965 to 1970. And you'll find that as the title of the book. Preface. Dedication. And we know that in our Acknowledgements file, the chapter title for that chapter is Dedication. So it's faithfully replicating all of the information that you've been providing in this rather <laughs> complex looking but very organized and efficient file. So as I say, you should never really have to look into this much, but it's interesting to know where the information is. So this has been a tutorial on how to create and edit the table of contents for your ebook. <laughs>